see Mike Tyson hitting them pads. You get a little nervous? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is looking like a animal. Jake Paul seems to be panicking after watching Mike Tyson's new training video. On the other hand, Oscar De La Hoya has warned Jake Paul as he anticipates the upcoming fight will further damage Paul's already questionable reputation. Jake Paul, uh, um, uh, for what he's doing and the attention he's bringing to the sport and what he wants to do with his promotion company and help the fighters, I love that. Um, but he also talks about, you know, being a world champion. De La Hoya pointed out that Paul talks about being a world champion and taking the sport seriously, which De La Hoya felt was not reflected in Paul's approach to the fight. His main critique of Jake Paul was that if he wanted to be taken seriously in the sport, he should follow the route that world champions take. According to De La Hoya, this is how one gains respect from fight fans, rather than fighting someone like Tyson. And, 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 and taking it serious and, well, this is not serious fighting a Mike Tyson, yeah, I can understand. It's a lot of money. It's gonna attract a lot of eyeballs. It's great. But the only critique I have uh, for Jake Paul is that, you know, if, if you wanna take the sport serious, then, then take the route that world champions take, you know, fighting top 20, top 10, top five. De La Hoya also expressed concerns about Mike Tyson's age and physical condition heading into the bout. He emphasized that Tyson is no spring chicken, highlighting the challenges and risks associated with competing at an advanced age in a sport as demanding and physically taxing as boxing. I worry about Tyson because I, we all love him. Sure, sure. We all love him and, and you know, he is 57, is yeah, he? Yeah. yeah, you know, it's he's, he's no spring chicken anymore. That's for sure. While criticizing the fight, De La Hoya said that the bout is attracting a new audience to the sport of boxing and is ultimately beneficial for the sport's growth and popularity. De La Hoya's statement underscores the impact that high-profile crossover fights, like the one between Tyson, a former heavyweight champion, and Paul, a YouTube personality turned boxer, can have on expanding boxing's reach and engaging new fans. Paul and Mike Tyson, you know, attracting new eyeballs, you know, a younger demographic, you know, you call it what it is. I mean, headgear, bigger gloves, but it's still boxing and it's still attracting fans, new fans. Um, yeah, I think boxing's in a good place right now. Amidst the fervor, a new player emerges, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Fresh from the grand spectacle of WrestleMania XL, his recent commentary on the impending match has sparked intrigue among enthusiasts, adding yet another layer of excitement to the unfolding drama. The problematic past between Logan Paul and The Rock is well known to the WWE universe, but it appears like Jake is fine with him. The Rock has inserted himself into the wagon. Sharing a picture with Paul, he took to social media and posted, Good to finally meet you, brother, at WrestleMania. Look Looking forward to your fight with the GOAT. As we briefly chatted, you wouldn't want it any other way. Can't wait to watch. Amidst the buzz of Johnson endorsing the burgeoning talent of Paul, reactions were a mixed bag. While some fans eagerly welcomed the gesture, others expressed discontent. The comment section of the Instagram post brimmed with criticism. Doubts surfaced regarding whether The Rock's endorsement was financially motivated, while skeptics suggested his efforts were futile. For instance, one fan said, You can still delete this, Rock. Mad respect for you, but L. Post. Another added, I think it's cool that the Rock did this for his make-a-wish before Mike punches him into the sun. And this fan said, I'm so disappointed seeing this on your feed. I thought you were better. Don't support these brothers. Meanwhile, although Derek Chisora is unable to keep Mike Tyson and Jake Paul apart, as they get ready for battle, he does anticipate safety measures for the fight. The regulations of the competition have been made public in great detail, and Chisora anticipates that both men will step up their defense when they get into the ring. He said, they're going to have head guards and 16-ounce gloves. I predicted it when they announced it. Chisora, a former world title challenger anticipates Tyson and Paul to use heavier gloves during sparring. He added, They are going to have head guards and gloves, but who knows, it might change. Jake Paul is a nutter, so he might walk to the ring with the head guard and then change his mind. I think it's going to be a draw. Now, the breaking news is that Jake Paul says that after studying the training footage of his boxing opponent, Mike Tyson, he is fearful of him. This boxing bout has stirred quite the controversy, especially considering Tyson's return to boxing at the age of 58, accompanied by some rather questionable training videos circulating online. And if the video didn't convince many, Paul says it made him more aware of his surroundings. Paul mentioned on his BS with Jake Paul podcast that he was nervous watching Tyson hit pads. He noted that Tyson was sprinting and found it motivating. Paul believed that carrying fear into the ring and during daily training was beneficial as it pushes one to improve. I eat fast, but it's motivating, I think. And I think it's good to carry fear into the ring and with you on a daily basis when you're training because it makes you better. And so Paul further commented 
commented that he was excited to face his toughest, craziest, and most powerful opponent to date. He found the challenge of moving up to the heavyweight division fun, and he acknowledged that Tyson was looking formidable. Paul also felt that people were underestimating him, noting that comments on Tyson's posts suggested that if Tyson lost, people would think the fight was rigged. It excites me that I have my toughest and craziest and most powerful opponent to date, and the challenge of going up to heavyweight is kind of like fun. That That is a benefit because I've been eating a lot of pasta. You love pasta. Yeah, I love pasta. So that's that's a good thing. But he definitely is looking like a fucking animal. I will say people are underestimating me though. Because when I go to his comments. And of course. Because people want to do anything they can to discredit me. I mean. That's just the name of the game and what's happened, but they're just saying like, if Mike loses, then fighting is rigged. Paul added that people were impressed with Tyson's performance on the mitts, but he believed that looking good on the mitts was only a small part of the battle. He emphasized that Tyson would have to face him in the ring. Paul then speculated that Tyson might be watching these videos and gaining confidence as a result. Basically like every comment, because they see how good he looks on the mitts, but Mike, looking good on the mitts, is not even half the battle you have to face me in the ring and every he knows that every every yeah <laughs> why but, are you talking but, he knows but, all that <laughs> but 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 i think he might be like seeing these videos of how good he looks hitting the mitts and like getting like turned up and his confidence is probably growing tyson on the other hand remains adamant about his ability to compete despite the passage of time his last professional bout dates back to 2005 when he retired during the fifth round against kevin mcbride although retired he stepped into the ring once more in 2020 for an exhibition match against fellow legend roy jones jr the encounter between the heavyweights ended in a lackluster draw leaving fans yearning for more excitement but tyson said i'm very much looking forward to stepping into the ring with Jake Paul. He's grown significantly as a boxer over the years, so it will be a lot of fun to see what the will and ambition of a kid can do with the experience and aptitude of a goat. It's a full circle moment that will be beyond thrilling to watch. Both Paul and Tyson have been training hard for their clash, but fans are completely convinced the YouTuber could be in for a rough night. A recent comparison of their videos shows Paul receiving body strikes from his opponent before showcasing his moves on the pads. While Paul and Tyson are shown going through their training routines, there is a clear difference in their levels of intensity. Paul appears to adopt a carefree attitude, which sharply contrasts with Tyson's meticulous approach. Tyson leaves no aspect unexamined during his rigorous training regimen. After that, three different clips of the former undisputed champion Tyson exercising with current coach Rafael Cordero show him crashing the pads. and fans are convinced they have spotted an easy winner when the pair meet, with one writing. The only reason Tyson losing this match if this was a setup, another agreed. Truth, I can't see Tyson demeaning himself in that way. Betting Paul will be nothing but a red stain after that match. One viewer claimed, if Iron Mike catches him with a solid right hook, Paul is going to start a cooking channel. Another fan suggested, Tyson out here looking like he's training to bury someone. Meanwhile, Jake Paul is looking like he belongs in a Planet Fitness Fails compilation. Another added, Jake Paul still has not had an actual fight. All of them are exhibitions against non-fighters, or are long past their prime, or are financially struggling and willing to get in there and get paid to take a fall. Nothing about him is believable. He belongs in WWE with his brother. One final comment concluded, Jake is looking at age. Junior better realize legends are immortal for a reason. And old Mike is still a dangerous man. I want Mike to reprise his first round KO. Let's make it 27 Mike. Meanwhile, Jake is already planning his next fights. Following his battle against Mike Tyson, Paul just offered Jorge Masvidal and Nate Diaz a 10 million dollar cage fight. Ever since joining the MMA promotion PFL last year, Paul has been tantalizing fans with the prospect of a cage match. After delivering a decisive blow to Diaz and securing a victory in their boxing bout last August, he extended a tempting 10 million dollar proposal to Diaz. Since then, he's relentlessly pursued a rematch with the UFC legend inside the octagon. Their own grave, I mean, it is what it is. Um, but 
I'm being so serious when I say that I want to fight them in MMA. Either Masvidal or Diaz in the PFL. Ten million dollar offer for either one of those guys. Paul stated on his BS podcast that he was serious about wanting to fight either Masvidal or Diaz in MMA, specifically in the PFL. He mentioned that he had offered a $10 million deal to either of them. Paul anticipated Masvidal's response, where he might say, Paul can't even box. Either one of those guys, and again, they will literally be hide behind the fact Masvidal, you can't even box. You what the f are you gonna do coming over to MMA, bro? I'm from Miami, Florida, bro. Fucking fuck you, dude. Don't disrespect me, you fucking Why not just take fucking bird, bird brain? That's like what he hides behind. Paul also commented that many fighters, including Patty Pimblett and Sean Strickland, hide behind excuses like bird brains. He noted that none of them had come forward to discuss or negotiate about a real fight or sparring session. And same with Patty and Sean Strickland. All of these guys like hide behind these crazy things, but still none of them have shown up to the table to talk any business about anything to make anything actually happen in a real fight, a real spar, whatever it is. So the offer still stands there. I want one, either one of those guys in MMA. Sean Strickland didn't. However, Masvidal remains bound by his UFC contract, despite hanging up his MMA gloves following a defeat to Gilbert Burns. Masvidal recently brushed off talks of a showdown with Paul, asserting that such a matchup would be hindered by the UFC's reluctance to endorse him. He said, I'll address this little coward right now because I know he's watching this shit. Listen, Jake, the UFC doesn't like your bitch ass. They said, we're not going to let you make money with this guy because at the end of the day, we're partners. Me and Nate, we're going to make money right now. Earlier this week, Paul unveiled the inaugural undercard bout for the upcoming spectacle, a highly anticipated rematch between Amanda Serrano and Katie Taylor. Their showdown in 2022 concluded with Taylor securing a narrow victory via split decision, setting the stage for an electrifying rematch. Taylor will be defending her uncontested super lightweight title in this rematch, and she will be risking everything. Ten two-minute rounds will be fought in the next bout between the two top female boxers. Furthermore, it is now said that Taylor will receive a record-breaking payment for the battle. According to the Irish Telegraph, she might take home an estimated $6 million in cash. It's being said that this fight will be the richest in professional women's boxing history. Talking about it, Taylor said, This is the rematch the world has wanted to see, and I'm delighted that it's finally happening. The first fight in New York was obviously an epic occasion, and it more than lived up to the billing, and I'm sure the rematch will be no different. On the other hand, Serrano added, I promised my fans they would see this rematch after we made history at MSG, and it feels like a dream come true to know that Katie and I are finally making it happen on the biggest stage possible. To show the world what elite women's boxing is all about. Meanwhile, if Mike Tyson and Jake Paul's fight is professionally sanctioned, the outcome may differ significantly from what spectators are anticipating. While the specifics of the match remain shrouded in uncertainty, Tyson has hinted at the likelihood of the bout being classified as an exhibition. In Intriguingly, both Tyson and Paul seem keen on etching this showdown onto their professional records, adding an extra layer of anticipation to the spectacle. Should their upcoming encounter gain professional sanction, both fighters might find themselves donning 10-ounce gloves, diverging from the speculated 16-ounce gloves typically seen in exhibition matches. In a professional bout, the clash could extend to 6, 8, or even 10 intense rounds, with a trio of judges positioned ringside to meticulously assess each moment. This starkly contrasts with an exhibition match where scoring is omitted, rendering the concept of a victor null. Furthermore, knockouts remain a tangible possibility in a professional contest, a spectacle rarely witnessed in exhibitions where fighters typically refrain from fully unleashing their prowess. Tyson hinted some of the fight rules could be similar to a professional bout when he told Fox News. This is called an exhibition, but if you look up exhibition, you won't see any of the laws we're fighting under. This is a fight. The 57-year-old admitted to being out of shape for his last fight, an exhibition against Roy Jones Jr., but insists he is taking his bout against Paul seriously. He added, I don't think he's faster than me. I've seen a YouTube video of him at 16 doing weird dancing. That's not the guy I'm fighting. This is a guy who's going to try and hurt me, which I'm accustomed to, and he's going to be greatly mistaken. As the fight gets closer, the less nervous I become because it's reality. And in reality, I'm invincible. Even though Paul is over 30 years younger than Tyson, a man who is decades past his prime, he believes this battle will be the hardest of his career to date. He said, I believe I have what it takes to beat him. I know this is the toughest test of my life, and it's an honor to be in there with Mike. But at the end of the day, I'm going to be the one who gets my hand raised. However, there are differing opinions about Mike Tyson
Tyson's choice to return to competition. John Kavanaugh, the respected leader of SBG Ireland and mentor to UFC star Conor McGregor, expresses his disagreement with the upcoming fight. Kavanaugh mentioned, I don't know whether there's a wink and a nod behind the stage. Is Tyson going to be 60 or 58? Full force blows to the head at 58. No, it's not a good idea. No matter who you are, you don't need to be doing that. If it was kind of an exhibition and they're kind of sparring, great. Kavanaugh hopes that the fight will be classified as an exhibition match to minimize the risk of Tyson sustaining a serious injury. He said, because I was asked about not necessarily just Mike, but this kind of YouTube boxing stuff. And my take on it now, rather than being snobby about it, is I just love anything. That gets more kids involved in sports. Kavanaugh also mentioned that it would be beneficial if the involvement extended extended to combat sports such as boxing, wrestling, or mixed martial arts, among others. He praised Jake Paul for potentially helping to fill local boxing gyms, stating that it somewhat aligns with their own goals, and described such efforts as brilliant. Boxing, wrestling, mixed martial arts, whatever the case may be. And if Jake Paul is doing a good job of filling local boxing gyms, it's, you know, it's a little bit of what we're trying to do. Yeah. Um, Brilliant. Kavanaugh also mentioned that he isn't particularly interested in the other aspects of the bout, especially since he believes someone approaching the age of 60 shouldn't be fighting. He recognized Jake's strength, highlighting his record of knockouts. Kavanaugh expressed his hope that the event would remain more of an entertaining spectacle, where participants simply move around the ring and engage in something similar to sparring. Particularly on that bout, I don't think someone approaching 60 um, needs to be fighting. You know, would appear Jake hits hard, you know, right. knocked out a few guys. So I just hope that it, it is what it is. It's kind of an entertainment thing. And they move around the ring um, and, you know, kind of spar. So as long as it's that, thumbs up. Another possibility for the upcoming match is that it could become just an exhibition devoid of the intensity of a full-fledged brawl. In this scenario, Kavanaugh imagines that both fighters might hold back their full force, possibly satisfying the spectators with the performance. He also remarked that he thinks the majority of the audience for these events are probably not high-level boxing enthusiasts. Really high-level yeah, boxing enthusiasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, what are they really watching for? They want to see a good press conference, maybe a bit of shoving and shouting, whatever, yeah, whatever else yeah. they put on. They'll want to see a spectacular event, you know, lighting and fireworks, great walkouts. But once it goes, click. MMA reporter Ariel Helwani recently provided information about the rules for the upcoming boxing match. Helwani confirmed that the current agreement is for the match to be officially recognized as a professional bout. He also commented on the criticism surrounding the Paul versus Tyson situation, pointing out that many who question Paul's legitimacy are now voicing concerns for Tyson's well-being. It's like the same people who were complaining that or criticizing or, or or taking shots whatever you want to say that jake paul sucks that he's not impressive that he fights cab drivers and he can't beat anyone and that he's crazy for thinking that he could do this and that he's living a fantasy bubble it seems like the same people who won't stop talking about how bad jake paul is as a boxer are now all of a sudden extremely worried that he's going to kill mike tyson and that he's killing, you know, a legend and that this is unsafe and that this is cruel and that this is this, that and the other. Moreover, Helwani pointed out the inconsistency in this perspective, explaining that fans can't both criticize Jake Paul for not being at a certain level and also express concern that he might defeat Mike Tyson. Could it be both? You can't in one breath say this guy sucks and is a bum and has no business stepping in the ring against anyone and then in the second breath say he is going to kill a 57 year old man you either think that this is a guy who is good or you think that this is a guy who is a bum the bum can't be the guy that you're afraid of killing you know a guy like Mike Tyson. Helwani questioned the logic of simultaneously criticizing someone for lacking skill and being unfit to compete, while also expressing fear that the same individual could potentially harm a 57-year-old man. He highlighted the contradiction in seeing someone as both a bum and a dangerous opponent, emphasizing that one cannot both dismiss a fighter's capabilities and be concerned for their opponent's safety against them. You know it was 57, and you could feel very strongly about a 27 year old fighting a 57 year old. On paper, yes, that is jarring. That jumps out at you right away. But two days ago, you were saying he was a bum. Now you're worried he's gonna kill Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson can can hold his own against a bum or a novice, in my opinion. On the other hand, if Jake were to lose to Tyson, it could severely damage his career, potentially more so than his loss to Tommy Fury. Ultimately, the spectacle of combat, with its financial rewards and potential for increased fame, remains the primary driving force behind this much-anticipated bout. Make sure to check out some of our other videos on the screen if you enjoyed this one.